How would I study for step one if I could start over? Hello friends, if you're new here, my name is Malki Asad, plastic surgery resident. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you a few tips and advices I wish I knew at the time of starting my USMLD preparation and things that I would have done differently if I could start over again. Although I scored 271 on step one, who cares about that anymore? Step one is pass fail. I still believe if I did these things, I would have improved the efficiency of my studying and maybe get a better score. The first is starting early. I wish I started preparing for my step one early in my medical school, not only to pass the step one or get a higher score on step one, but because the step one materials help me understand medicine better. So if you start medical school now and you're interested in the USMLE journey, don't delay starting your step one until the final year of your preparation. Don't say I'm very busy with my school, I don't have time, I need to focus on my subjects. That is not a good idea because if you start with your USMLE preparation early on, that will help you understand the subjects in your school better, know what is important, what is not, and maybe get a better score on your school subjects and finish step one earlier. The second thing I would have done differently if I could start over is the resources. I, when I started preparing for my step one, used so many resources for each subject before starting UOLD and first aid. Although I had a good base from my medical school, so I had a good understanding of most of the topics covered in step one without the need for these resources. And I delayed the two most important resources for step one, which is UOLD and first aid, until I finished these resources. Although these resources broadened my knowledge about step one, they had so many low yield topics covered in them that I would consider wasted my time. Not, as, not fully wasted my time, but I spent so much time doing these resources that I could have focused on the more high yield topics. So in my opinion, if you're starting now and you have a good base of the basic science topics, the topics covered in step one, such as anatomy, biochemistry, pharmacology, don't start with resources other than you all and first aid, especially that step one is pass fail now. So if you're looking for a higher score, maybe you can uh, look for a different strategy, but especially now that step one is pass fail, if you have a good knowledge, start with you all. This is the most important resource, the question bank that has explanation and has so many useful tips that can help you with your understanding of the topic in addition to the memorization and solving the exam questions. If you are able to understand UOLD without these additional resources, why, why spend your time with these resources? Go directly to UOLD. If you're having a systematic problem in one of the subjects, let's say you're trying to solve immunology and you can't understand what UOLD is saying, you're having difficulty with the concepts covered in your world. Even after reading the explanation, you're not able to understand. In that case, you might need to do some subject or like some books or some other materials. But if you are, if you have a good base and you start your world, you're able to understand things well, go ahead and continue your world. Don't start first aid. First aid might be tricky because it's a review book and it's hard to understand the topic because there is no explanation. Start your world after you master your world, go to first aid. But if you start first aid directly, you might feel that it's too difficult and you go and look at these resources which will take months for you to prepare. And I assume most of the people watching this video don't have much time. The third thing I would have done differently is the assessment tools. In my opinion, you should start assessment tools as early as possible. I started the assessment tools after I finished the books. And in my opinion, that is late. You should start assessment tools early on in the process just to have an idea of where you stand. Maybe you're scoring 250s on step one from your medical school knowledge before you even start studying. So why do you need to study all the materials if the passing score is below 200 and you're passing the exam without even studying? In that case, you might just go and do the exam or just do quick studying and, and uh, do the exam. Why do you need to spend months and months of studying uh, while you can use that time to do other things such as research, US clinical experience, or study for step 2 CK. So start assessment tools early on in the process, identify where you stand, and then do frequent assessment tools as you go on, as you finish your world, as you finish first aid, and see how you progress. The fourth tip is analyzing where you make mistakes in your assessment exams. And this is something I did not do at the beginning of my step one preparation, I did it at the end but it's very helpful to increase your score. I usually divide the mistakes on these assessment tools into three main categories. The first one is lack of knowledge. So you have no idea about this concept. 
you've never studied it and you need to study other resources or look for more books or more question banks to be able to know about these disease processes. Generally, these are not very common or not the main reason why you make mistakes on the exam because most of the diseases go over and over and they take different angles from them. But the, main, the first category is the one that you have no idea about. This is a disease that you've never studied. You studied the whole UOL question bank and you've never heard about this disease. And this could be category number one, lack of knowledge. Category number two is you've heard of this disease, you've studied it at some point in time, but you forgot. So it's mainly a memory problem. So by reviewing the materials you've studied, by reviewing your notes, by reviewing the question bank or first aid, you might be able to improve on this specific problem that you know the information, but you forgot it. You heard of this disease process, but you forgot the enzyme that is responsible for that. So this is actually an easy problem to fix because if you go and review the materials that you've studied and you have a detailed study strategy, and I have a detailed course on how to improve your memory retention, how to study effectively that you can check out in the cards above and the description below. And this course has 100% refund policy if you're not satisfied. So as I said, this problem might look a big deal to you, but it's actually easy to fix. The third problem is that you know the disease process, you remember the disease, you remember the information, but you're still not getting the question right because you did not think correctly about it. You took it from an angle, you focused on one aspect of the question, but you should have focused on something else or you didn't read the question right. And this problem could be fixed by you solving more questions. It might be harder to fix than the second problem, but it's still doable. If you solve more questions, you look at different questions. Don't solve the same questions over and over. It gives you the illusion that you know because you just solved the question a month ago or two months ago. Choose different set of questions which will give you this flexibility, the ability to look at the right thing and pay particular attention when you're solving the question and when you're reading the explanation of why certain answers are wrong. You have to look at these keywords that makes an answer right or wrong and in that case you would be able to answer the question easier because sometimes you think you know the disease process, you think you remember everything but you missed a very important keyword in the question or the choices that makes one answer right or wrong. And the final tip I have for you today is taking notes and this is something I actually did at the beginning of my preparation but I just wanted to mention it to you because in my opinion it's very important. I know some people advocate against taking notes but in my opinion they're very important to decrease the amount of information you have to review at the end of your preparation because you all now is 4,000 questions. So imagine you have to review 4,000 questions at the end of your preparation. It might be very difficult and you don't have time to do that. The same for first aid, it's a lot of information. So in my opinion, you need to take some form of notes and notes don't necessarily mean you write another book down. It might be in the form of electronic notebook, which is available in you all. It might be in the form of flashcards. It might be in the form of flagging questions, underlining certain things in first aid, highlighting certain things. Don't just copy you all on first aid and spend hours and hours writing. You might choose to write a few things, but just don't fall in the trap of writing everything down and ending up with 400 pages book that you spent hours and hours writing. So pick an easy way to make notes. So when you come and review, it would be easier for you to review the whole information or the things that you don't know in a shorter period of time. So these are the things I would have done differently when studying step one if I could start over. I know that the route to residency in the US is difficult and it is not easy, especially for international medical graduates. But make sure to have fun along this journey and remember that we are here for you. We are here to help you. On our website, The Match Guy, we have different services for those applying to residency starting from USMLE tutoring. So we provide one-on-one -on -one subject specific tutoring. We provide advising for what to study, uh, to create a study schedule, study plan. We also offer services for those who apply to residency such as personal statement editing, CV editing, residency advising if you have any questions about what to do and your loss in your journey and interview preparation and anything else you need throughout this journey. If you have any questions about this video or any of our services, make sure to leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Malik Asad, my Facebook page Malik Asad MD, or our email info at thematchguy.com. If you find any value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can support the work that we are doing to help applicants around the world pursue residency in the US and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching and for being a member of this amazing YouTube community. See you in future videos. Peace.